Hello everyone. Um, as you are all probably aware, I uploaded a introductory video on PDA a few days ago, and I shared that on a UK PDA Facebook page, where I received very positive feedback, and people were kind enough to help promote that video. They shared it around to different groups and to their families and anyone who may have found it interesting or useful. So. Thank you very much for that, I really appreciate it. So, I've been inundated with requests and recommendations for particular topics. And amongst those requests was definitely a preponderance of school requests. So that's what I thought I'd talk about today. Um, so my schooling experience Firstly, I should probably point out that I was private schooled. Um, my plummy accent may have given that away. The reason why I'm pointing that out is because I know not everyone was private schooled, so my experience obviously differs from other people's, and, and that's, that's fine. I was probably under a considerable amount more pressure than most people, which could absolutely increase the chances of my anxiety skyrocketing. It certainly did, eventually. So, when I was four, I was sent to a prep school just north of London, in Hertfordshire, which is where I grew up. And there really weren't any problems at first. Like, almost nothing. Because going to school was exactly what I wanted to do. And because I wanted to do that, I was able just to get on with the work. There was nothing I was resisting, because it was in complete accordance or harmony with my brain chemistry. I can only speak for myself, because I know the spectrum is a whole pantheon of variety. And everyone's autism varies to all sorts of degrees, so I can only speak for myself. I've always been more autodidactic, that is, I've been more inclined to educate myself, because I find that when someone else tries to do it, I'm much more likely to repudiate the information. So from a very, very young age, I've been so enthralled and intrigued with many different subjects. I remember when I was very young, I was so into animals and I had this big animal book um, that I read and read and read. I carried it around with me everywhere. I was never more than a few centimetres away from that book. It was always in arm's reach. Um, so... I'd go through these phases of obsession with something. And I have done since before school. And before school, I was at a Montessori nursery. Um, I explained about the goldfish drawing incident. Um, also, sometimes my mother would pick me up from school and take me home, nursery, excuse me. And she'd watch me kind of pace around the coffee table, like over and over and over again. And, you know, obviously it, like, disturbed her almost because I literally would just pace around and hyperventilate as if I was kind of shaking off any excess energy. Like, I almost may have absorbed because that's the thing. When you're hypersensitive and you're placed in a multi-sensory environment, you, you do become like a sponge. You soak everything up. And I think that's kind of what I was doing when I was two, three, four years old. And I can relate to that now if I'm in a restaurant or in a theatre or at some kind of party. You know, it's very overwhelming and it increases my chances of having a meltdown. Um, so I dealt with that through alcohol and narcotics as an adolescent. That's another story I'll come on to. Let's just concentrate on school for now. So initially there was that problem of being 
completely overstimulated because I could not process my environment properly. So naturally, obviously, that would increase my anxiety levels. So schooling. I loved school at first. I absolutely loved being at school because I wanted to do the work. It was new. It was fascinating. And it wasn't until that particular obsession began to wane is when things, my symptoms were a lot more noticeable and prominent. So by the time I got to about year two, which I think is the equivalent of grade three in the States, if any American viewers are tuning into this video right now, I just couldn't concentrate anymore. So it wasn't a case of me just resisting a demand. It just, my, my concentration was just completely gone. You know, I couldn't focus on anything for more than a few seconds because my brain wouldn't allow it in. So if in year two we were learning about history, which was something that I subsequently became very, very engrossed in, but just not at the time. It wasn't the right time. My brain was like, no, 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 I'm not learning about this now. When I was seven, it was probably animals by that point, or it could have been something else, like I had little astronomy books. So say if at school I was expected to learn about Vikings, my brain would be like, no, because right now I'm learning about astronomy. Right now I'm learning about planets. Right now I'm learning about the stars. And nothing, my brain would not consider anything else. It was just that and only that. That's when it started to become a problem. Um, so I probably just displayed classic um, ADHD symptoms, which I also have a diagnosis of. Um, and it just exacerbated from then on. You know, the pressure was too much. I was just, you know, if we were set an assignment, I'd take it home. I just, I wouldn't do it. I used to say to my mum or grandmother or whoever was trying to encourage me to do my homework, they'd say, come on, you need to do this homework. Why? You know, it just it, just because you have to, it's compulsory, it's something you need to do, was not good enough. You know, why? Why? And, you know, simple answer, but they weren't prepared to answer. They're like, oh, because it's important. And I, I used to sit with my dog and say, being with my dog is way more important than doing my schoolwork. And they'd say, no, it's not. And I just have this bizarre method of reasoning. Um, so no, homework is completely inane to me. I didn't articulate it in that way, whatever the seven, eight, nine, ten year old equivalent is. So and I'd be very assertive. Home is for play. School is for work. Home is for play. School is for work. So quite black and white in my thinking as well. Um, and then I was very withdrawn by the end of primary school to the point where I couldn't. I couldn't do anything. I was. I didn't want to speak to anyone. I always had my head down. I looked pale and unhealthy. I got really, really chubby as well because I began self-medicating with food. Um, I, I just had no lust for life whatsoever. And it was a very introverted form of PDA. Um, a very kind of... Uh, a yin feeling, perhaps, yin-yang. Of PDA, quite mellow and broken, and and then my parents moved me to a Waldorf school, Rudolf Steiner school, which is where I found some confidence because where being at a private school, I was very restricted. I suddenly found that I had no boundaries. The possibilities were infinite. You know, like wow, I was suddenly placed in this open space free for me to stretch my legs and spread my wings and do whatever I wanted. So I really, really amassed this confidence in myself. And that's when my internal neurological difficulties began to alter. That's when I began realising that defying the norm gave me power. But at the same time, it was a way of dealing with the anxiety first. So if, for example, and it wasn't just being told what to do, I began feeling very insecure. I formed an identity as a troublemaker, as a rebel. So if it was, uh, let's say, one child would throw a 
paper mache at another child across the room, I'd have to top that and throw it at a teacher. If someone started a food fight at lunch, I would do everything in my power to carry it on into the lesson. You know, I had to make a sign. I had to make myself seen, you know. And this became... It, it sounds like I'm just being really, really naughty and outrageous and arrogant, which I guess I was, but it was a lot more than that. I remember getting letters home. I'd get seven letters home one week, six the next, and I'd feel really, really insecure about it. I'd have to get eight. I'd have to get nine. I'd keep... It was just out of control to the point where I eventually left that school. And then... That was alternative schooling. Then I went to a really alternative school afterwards that I'll make in a second video, so to be continued.